is A to Z with Mark Zinno, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, and it starts now. Good afternoon. Welcome to A to Z here on Locked On Sports Atlanta, where today I tell you it's about redemption and progress. Welcome in. We are live here on this Tuesday as we uh, have start to come down a little bit from the bad weekend that was in Atlanta sports. Welcome in. I am Mark Zeno. This is A to Z. Give us a follow on Twitter at Locked On ATL. You can follow me at Mark Zeno, M-A-R-K-Z-I-N-N-O. Of course, we have great news for you guys. If you are, have an Amazon Fire Stick or have Roku TV, Locked On Sports Atlanta is now part of Roku TV. So we're excited to be on that platform. Make sure you guys check us out there as well if you can and watch all the great shows on the Locked On Sports Atlanta Network right on Roku TV. All right, we got a lot to get to today. Mike Rothstein of ESPN.com is going to join us. We'll do some more reactions to the Falcons, plus the Braves' closing situation. They got by with one last night as the Mets lose, Braves lose, so uh, no harm, no foul. But uh, they got to fi finish up this slog of a West Coast trip here and get back to Truist uh, by the end of the week. All right, um, reaction from yesterday. I think we had some pretty pointed words for Arthur Smith uh, and his post-game reaction on Sunday. And I recorded the show prior to the Arthur Smith press conference yesterday, but I did make the journey up to Flowery Branch and went out there because, as I said, I wanted to hear from Arthur Smith about his reaction in the post-game because a lot of it was what, what people thought he, you know, he was acting childish or he was stomping his feet kind of deal. You know, I didn't necessarily think that. I just generally thought that he was pitting himself – against the media and a narrative that wasn't necessarily true and one that he's going to have a hard time getting his way out of because this team likely won't win many games. If they do, then he can tap dance all over our face about what we wrote and what we said prior to the season starting, but you don't do it after a, a, a come-from-behind loss in the fourth quarter and a bad come-from-behind loss to your rival. So for me, what I went there wondering is how he was going to react, how, what he was going to say when asked the question. I'm going to play it for you here in a second. You're going to hear my direct question to him and his answer. Um, and, and I want you to judge for yourself what you're hearing. But I would also tell you that if you're just listening to this on regular audio podcast, you know, looking at his mannerisms and seeing how he was very direct and almost humble to a point, I think was really critical for uh, showing everybody that he understood in the moment he made a mistake. Here is from yesterday's Arthur Smith Monday press conference. Coach, after the game, obviously, it's, it's emotional. Uh, mm -hmm. He had mentioned two or three times what the media had said, preseason rankings and everything else. I mean, obviously, that has nothing to do with what happens on the field. No, I don't. Okay, so is that just an emotional response in that moment? or Yeah, it's, you know, look, obviously, you're, you're frustrated when you lose, um, especially that type of game. Um, that wasn't an indictment on anybody in the crowd. It was more of a... And I could have certainly framed it differently, but it was more of like, hey, this team is has made progress and we're here to compete. And, uh, yeah, it wasn't an indictment on the crowd. And, yeah, I can be better. You talk about being objective, you know, don't let frustration and make some grand, vague statement. That's really not my, what my point. My point was more of this team has made a lot of progress. Uh, we finished games last year, ironically, down in New Orleans and, we got to clean up stuff in the fourth quarter, but it starts with me. I mean, that is about as good as an answer as you can give. It really is. He was honest. He was forthright. He owned it. He took responsibility, said he didn't want to make a grand generalization, that he was trying to point out something else. And in the moment, it came out wrong. I can forgive him for all that. I, I, I think there's redemption. All that. I think there was a lot of questions about his sort of fitness as a coach and his fitness to lead the team um, in those moments and the way he reacted. But he, Absolutely nailed it, if you ask me. I, I was really impressed with his answer. And, and I, look, I told you guys yesterday, and I said it on Twitter, I like Arthur Smith. I like him a lot. I, I think that he is a good head coach. I think he had a bad moment. I think he's entitled to that. You're entitled to a couple of them in a the game of football. It's an emotional game. It drains you. So I'm not gonna go, going to sit here and, and harp on this and what he said after the game any longer. I think he answered it. He ended it. He was able to move on. But I think the big piece here is what he said about this team has made progress. And why is that important? 
tell you that in a second. First, a word from my friends at betonline.net, the fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your betting needs. Find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. BetOnline.net, the place to go. They got reviews for every single league, news for every single league. Obviously, the NFL in full swing. Major League Baseball playoffs coming up right around the corner. NBA, NHL season starting soon. Combat sports, esports, even golf. BetOnline continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information. From live in-game betting, which is a ton of fun, scores, podcasts, they've got you covered all of it. Head to bet online today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today. BetOnline.net, where the game starts. Progress is what this is all about. I think we said yesterday on the show that you have to take a 30,000 foot view. You have to be process over results this year with this team. And the bigger thing, again, in reality, they outplayed that team that they lost to in the fourth quarter. They outplayed it for three quarters. They outplayed it for three quarters plus. And that is a big step. Finishing games gets easier. It genuinely does. Like it, it is not as difficult as you think to finish games. It does get easier. That said, the step to finish, the step before being able to finish games is being in a position to finish games. Can't be trailing. You gotta be ahead. And they did that. So many positives came out of week one that we really need to turn our attention to. You guys know me. I'm not the Pollyanna guy. I'm not, oh, everything's great. Everything's wonderful. But in reality, as I said repeatedly, if I would have told every Falcons fan before the game, you were going to rush for 200 yards, you were going to have four sacks, and Marcus Marietta wasn't going to throw a pick, you would say, yes, give me that game right now. Without knowing the result, give me that game right now. You'll take that every single week. Those are like key components of winning football games. And the fact they were able to do it and execute it is really important. Here's the other part. And I asked Arthur Smith about this, but the preparedness for that game, they were prepared. That's why they were able to take a commanding lead. That's why they were in control of the game for three quarters. That's why they outplayed them because they were prepared. I have no doubt that Arthur Smith will have this team prepared to play again this week against the Rams. Does it mean they're going to win? No. Does it mean that they are going to have a lead in the fourth quarter? Maybe not. But does it mean that they won't get blown out? I think the answer is yes. Why is that important? Because in years past, this is the spot where they would get blown out. An emotional loss. They come from behind and boom, what happens? The next team comes in and they are emotionally deflated and they're unprepared and they get smoked. That won't happen this Sunday in LA. That's my guess. That's my prediction. And that's really the only prediction you need to have is that they are not going to get their doors blown off by a team that's got more rest, that's ticked off, that needs to get better quicker, needs a win as the defending Super Bowl champs. And they're coming up against a team that, you know, again, hapless, 45th best roster, whatever you want to say. So this is a spot where the Rams really are going to look to take advantage. What can the Falcons do? Smack them right back in the mouth. That's what I'm curious to look for. Don't care if they win the game. Genuinely don't. Give me competitive football. The Falcons should cover this number easily. The look ahead line was 13. It opened up at 10. Falcons should cover this number. I believe they will. I genuinely believe they will. Now, if they lose this game by 14 or more, what I think is fair is that if they were in a one-score game late in the fourth quarter and an extra sort of garbage touchdown ice is the thing and the Falcons can't get back in it or you know they're trying to go hurry in for a game tying score or to bring it within you know a field goal for a chance for an onside kick kind of deal you know they're down by eight or or nine or ten whatever it is and uh they end up getting a pick six and a turnover whatever it is and you know they lose by 17 14 whatever it may be I think that's acceptable if it goes down that way the game script goes down that way but just don't lose 35 to 10. Plain and simple. All right, coming up next, Mike Rothstein of ESPN. ESPN.com was with me yesterday at that press. I want to get his thoughts and reactions from it uh, as we continue on with the Atlanta Falcons. That's next right here on A to Z on Locked On Sports Atlanta. Free on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. search Locked On Sports Atlanta. Don't forget, 